little bit of an AD. I think it's it's an emerging field, which is quite exciting, on which we're working quite actively. Um, so NAD is a sort of one of the key building blocks of, of life. It is a, a form of energy. Think about it as a currency. If the, your body and metabolism was its economy, the NAD is actually a, a, a currency transporter. Uh, think Loomis. Uh, so there, it's a molecule that is able to shuttle energy from one part to the other in the cell. And, and Interestingly, it is also a cofactor for a number of factors that your body uses to fight aging, including the sirtuins, a family of proteins that really regulate many of the key players in aging. And there is growing evidence that NAD levels decrease during aging. Uh, what's much less clear is uh, why, and which is what we need to understand if we want to, to restore NAD levels. And so, uh, understanding that NAD levels decrease. Um, so my lab focuses in part on trying to understand what are these mechanisms that accounts for the decrease. But we also are uh, focusing on, on some of the ways we can restore NAD levels. And uh, so there are a number of molecules that uh, your audience probably have heard of, uh, such as NR and NMN. So these are uh, precursors to NAD that bypass where we think the problem is, and they allow you to restore NAD levels uh, while you age, at least to some degree. Um, so we, we've recently made uh, uh, really interesting discoveries, uh, which is going to come out in, in Nature Metabolism uh, uh, soon in the next month or two, uh, where we've actually linked the NAD field and the field of chronic inflammation. And um, I think what these observations do is to highlight a mechanism by which um, why which uh, chronic inflammation and, and senescence uh, can actually lead to a decrease in NAD levels. And so the, the, the story goes like this. We, we know that uh, chronic inflammation is, is in part due by, uh, caused by senescent cells. These are cells that accumulate as you age. Uh, they actually spewing out a number of inflammatory markers. And what's been very unclear is why, why, is that, why is that bad? Why is chronic inflammation leading to, uh, to problems of aging? And so what we found is that these molecules secreted by the senescent cells, uh, it's called the SASP, senescence associated secretory phenotype, is actually uh, are triggering one of the enzymes that degrades NAD, it's called CD38. Mm -hmm. And so um, now we, that means we have a link between senescence, which is one of the hallmarks of aging, and metabolism dysfunction, which is caused by decrease NAD levels. And so this uh, brings up a whole series of interesting uh, possibilities for us to explore in the future in terms of how, you know, how can we restore NAD levels in the most efficient way. Yeah, that's very interesting. Two things. One, how does the body rid itself of senescent cells? And two, um, I read a paper recently about a unifying theory of ketosis being that it spares burning ketones versus gl glucose um, spares the amount of NAD in our cells by and changes the NAD to NADH ratio. Yeah, so how does the body rid itself of senescent cells and can we upregulate those pathways or these processes? Um, and then two, is that true that ketosis um, spares NAD during metabolism? Yeah. Well, the second question is a bit more complicated and technical to, to, uh, to discuss, but maybe you can refer your audience to that paper. I think it, <laughs> it, it really uh, summarizes pretty well this whole idea. Again, another link between NAD and, and beta and ketosis, I think, which exists. With regards to senescence, I think it, it's quite interesting. So these cells, the, the process of senescence is thought to occur, uh, to have evolved, as a, as a protective mechanism against cancer or against um, a variety of other insults that cell undergo. And so the, the, the scheme goes like a cell, for example, uh, starts proliferating abnormally because it has a mutation that would tend to become uh, cancerous. Well, there are mechanisms built in into the cell to recognize this precancerous form and to actually shut down the cell and make it uh, become senescent. Um, the, the role of the SASP, the senescence associated secretory phenotype I was discussing is, is perhaps, uh, this is one of the models, to trigger the immune system to come and get rid of this cell. So the cell would self-identify as being toxic and call in some help from the immune system to get rid of it. Um, 
Now we know that this actually happens. So cells, senescent cells get cleared away uh, and, and they appear actually quite, when we're quite early, but they are, they are cleared away progressively. But there's some evidence also that as we age, this clearance mechanism or the rate at which the cells become senescent uh, becomes in balance so that the net balance is a progressive accumulation of more and more senescent cells, therefore leading to this chronic inflammatory state. Now, how do you get rid of them? Well, there are two ways. One, uh, it might be that having a better and more effective immune system is critical. Uh, so, you know, and as we age, we know part of the problem is your immune system uh, degrades. You're less able to respond to vaccine, but you're also probably less able to eliminate senescent cells. So that's the, you know, maximizing everything that creates a healthy immune system is a big area of focus in my lab. But the second area is a, a whole field that has now emerged is so-called senolytics. And so uh, through the work of Judy Campisi at the back and uh, Jan van Dersen uh, at uh, Mayo Clinic, we've learned that um, there are a number of small molecules that will selectively kill uh, senescent cells. And so this led to the creation of a number of companies, including Unity, which was founded at the Buck, uh, which are pursuing uh, the possibility of using these senolytic drugs uh, to eliminate senescent cells in older individuals. And I can tell you in mice, uh, the results are quite promising. Um, in humans, uh, clinical trials have, are being conducted. The first one failed, unfortunately, uh, but that's, that's what happens when you try to develop drugs. It's, it's hard work. Uh, but I think I'm confident that in the future we will see uh, senolytics. There's also a new class of drugs that are emerging, the so-called senomorphics. Uh, so these are uh, drugs that do not kill the senescent cells, but block them from releasing the SASP, uh, the, the, pheno, the, the proteins that cause the inflammation. So all, uh, there's lots of you know, startups that are pursuing these uh, different uh, line of investigation. And I, I think in the next 10 years, we're going to see some molecules emerge that will have really incredibly interesting potential uh, to, to fight aging. Yeah. Um, do you think that fasting would have any sort of effect on clearing out senescent cells? That's a very good question. And uh, I do not know. <laughs> I, I, should, I should read about this. I, I have not seen anything really directly addressing the role of fasting, but it doesn't mean that it's not been tested. Because senescent cells, they're not fully dead. They're just kind of surviving there in a non-functioning state. And like yeah. you said, just secreting these inflammatory uh, yes. molecules. But you mentioned a drug that inhibits these SASPs. But if you had a functioning immune system, you wouldn't want to inhibit the SASPs, would you? Because you're, it, that's part of the immune response to take care of them. Yes, that's, that's a good question. That, that argument has been raised against the idea of, seno, of senomorphics because you're essentially not solving the problem. You are, the beauty of senolytics is that they could be administered for a short period of time or episodically, periodically to kill whatever senescent cells had, had emerged. Uh, the idea of the senomorphic is more of a drug that you would have to take continuously. I, I, I personally like the idea of a senolytic much better than a senomorphic.